Good morning, everybody. Today is September 4th, Saturday, September 4th. Dr. Vong here with your quick COVID update. Uh, yesterday's Friday's numbers, not good. 191,000 new cases in America, bringing up our average to about 164,000 new cases, uh, average 14 day. So um, the virus is clearly moving up towards the Northeast coast. Um, even though the you know people don't don't make too big of a deal about like oh the numbers are coming down like they're not they are not they're just not spiking in states like Arkansas and Mississippi and Georgia like they were they're like they're not climbing 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 I mean they are plateaued at very high numbers you're gonna um, run out of hospital beds 90% ICU capacity in most states uh, down in the south so it's heading up the northeast uh, South Carolina but you got to be careful man like. Kentucky, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and, you know, and Ohio. And it's just a matter of time before it, it gets up to Chicago. We're starting to see the effects of the Stur Sturgis motorcycle rally, South Dakota, Wyoming is red hot. Um, and so it's just a matter of time, you know, it's just a matter of time. Um, what I wanna talk about real quick today is uh, the nature of viruses. And, you know, I'll get back to a little bit of, um, you know, virology for a second. And the funniest thing about viruses, we talk about viruses like they're alive. And we say things like, you know, this virus is mutating and this virus, you know, is looking for a host to lung cell and things like that. And the funny, bizarre thing about viruses is they are not alive. <laughs> There's... There is nothing about viruses that make them, they're like their own taxonomy. They are completely different. They are just basically a little strand of either DNA or RNA inside a capsule. And on all it does, all a virus, a, a virus doesn't travel, it doesn't, it's weird trying to figure out the right verbs to use. It's just random chance. You know, everything that happens with a virus is random chance. So why lock down, Dr. V? Well, if, if, the, if there are no people interacting, if there are no marketplaces, if there are no restaurants and, and events where people are gathering, then there's nothing for, there's no place for the virus to go. Who understands what I'm trying to say? Viruses just randomly just float around the air looking for a host. And sometimes that host is a bird right so like bird flu sometimes it's you know in in a pig right swine flu sometimes it's in an animal and then it makes its way into a human host those are called zoonotic viruses that you know start in animals and then make it into humans and we're just another animal by the way in case you're wondering so there's nothing like dubious about it there's nothing uh, premeditated there, there, the, a virus does not have a nucleus, it doesn't have a heartbeat, it doesn't have a brain, it doesn't have blood flow, it's just bizarre. It's just basically a, a small, tiny strip of either DNA or an RNA around a capsule that for whatever reason has, through a bizarre chain of circumstances, has developed into this I can't even call it a creature because <laughs> it's a virus. <laughs> it's like trying to define it by using the definition of itself. <laughs> and, and then it, it's evolved in such a way that it uses its host cells own replication mach machinery to make copies of itself. In other words, it can't make copies of itself. It needs a host. So if there's no host, then it just goes away. It just dies. It dies in in hot air. It dies in hot surfaces. That's why that's why like the flu virus and things like are usually in colder temperatures, not colder temperatures. Think about that. That's why we get you know influenza usually in the fall and winter months because people are gathered together right indoors and the temperature has come down so the viruses last a little bit longer in the ambient atmosphere. And that's it. You know. And so that if you understand that part of virology, you understand why masks work. You understand why social distancing works. 
you understand why not gathering in big events and football stadiums and pep rallies and things like that, why that works, right? And, and then if you understand that, then you understand mutations. You understand, oh, so every time, and there's, there's millions of viruses. It's not like you only get like, oh, I got the Rona. <laughs> like, it's not just one little virus inside your nose. You got millions of viruses inside your nose. That's called the viral load. Like how much virus <laughs> did you inhale, right? That landed when someone coughed or sneezed, right? And then, and then it's using your uh, cells to, to make copies of itself. Eventually it'll find its way through your bloodstream and into, um, you know, into your lung cells where that's where, because it, has, it binds to certain receptors and that's like the, the cells that have those receptors are, are, they're all over your body, but a lot of them are in your lungs. So that's why it becomes a respiratory illness. So you've got like hundreds of millions of copies of these viruses and, 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 and every time it uses your copying machinery, it makes a, a small little error. You know how like back in the day when we had Xerox machines and <laughs> you would use, use it over and over and over and over and co make copies and copies and copies? And let, let's say you're making three, 300 copies or 1,000 copies. That, that, that last 1,000 copy doesn't quite look like the original copy. It might be faded. It might have a, like a little um, mark in the corner or whatever. The toner went out in some places, right? And then... And then uh, there's always that one little f uh, fleck of hair or dust or something in the corner that causes that little black line and you're like, ah, damn it. And then you use that, that 1,000th copy or the, or the 500th copy and you use that as the first copy next time you use it. And then it's not quite the same. You make another 1,000 copies and now the 2,000th copy looks like very different than the original. Well, imagine doing that for hundreds of millions of copies. The, the fact that we only have four mutants of concern and about another four or five mutants of interest, mutations of interest, variants of interest, um, like the new one, Mu, Mu, M-U, um, the, the, the fact that we don't have more variants, you know, because, you know, it's had thousands of mutations, but they don't show up as one, is it, is it advantageous for the virus? But two, does it develop into some sort of clinical uh, significance? And that's what we're really interested in, right? And, um, but who cares about mu and lambda and all this stuff when, you know, Delta's doing a pretty damn good job. I mean, <laughs> Delta's burning through you know, the fucking world right now. And Americans just act like it's, it's not the same virus, guy. I mean, it's the same virus, but it's not the same clinical disease. I think that's my point. You know, uh, as last year, it, Delta's making people a lot sicker, a lot younger population, breakthrough cases. And I don't understand the people who use this stuff as reasoning for not getting vaccinated. Like, see, vaccines don't work. It, it, you can still catch it. You can still get it, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, it's all about risk. Do you not understand this? Like, why wear a condom? It decreases your risk of pregnancy and sexually transmitted disease. And yes, there are such things as condom failures. <laughs> I get it. But you're cutting down your risk. Um, you know, like, masks don't work. Uh, yes, they do. And they, they totally work. I mean, otherwise, why get a gas mask and stuff? Anyway, it's just dumb. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Um, dude, viruses don't care. They, they... They are all they do is float around looking for host cells. They don't care if you're black or white or young or old or American or Afghan or South African. They don't care if you're Republican. They don't stop to ask if you're a Democrat. They don't stop. Listen to this. They viruses don't stop and ask if you've been vaccinated. They don't ask to see your vaccine card. <laughs> they just hop on in here and see you know, all right, let's fight. Let's go. <laughs> is there an immune system that's been primed or not? Oh, shit. This one's been primed. This is going to be a harder battle. And it just tries to fight. And, you know, your body either responds faster because it's been vaccinated or is slower to respond because you have not been vaccinated. Or you have, you know, you, you have comorbidities or you're overweight or you have diabetes or you have 
uh, immune dysfunction or you're a chemotherapy patient. You know, there's, remember what I've said a long time ago, there's always the virus and then there's always the host, right? Don't, don't ever think like it's just all about the virus. And don't ever think it's just all about you. I'm young, I'm healthy, I don't have diseases. This virus can't, you know, can't beat me. Dr. V, you gotta talk more about vitamin D and zinc and get healthy. Dude, use my natural immune system. I mean, tell that to the Aztecs, tell that to the Mayans, tell that to every Native American, tell that to every indigenous population that was exposed to measles and smallpox. Really? It doesn't, dude, that's not the time. Fine, yeah, it, of course I'm all about eating healthy and of course I'm all about nutrition. Of course you should be drinking water and green smoothies, but you should have been doing that years ago. The fact that two thirds of Americans are overweight and, now, and we're in the middle of the pandemic and you think you're smart because you think like you're promoting your natural immunity and, and boosters and supplements. Like now, now you're clever. Now you know something more than evolutionary virologists or you know, uh, that they don't know? Come on, get real. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to rant, but today I had a little bit of rant in there. All right, I'll be back tomorrow with another update. <laughs>